What is up, music junkies? Thank you for tuning in today. We have a very special guest with us, Elijah Kyle, man. What's up? Yo, yo. How you doing, brother? What's up, man? Pretty good. How are you? Good, man. I appreciate you having me on this, dude. Yeah, thank you for coming in. So, you know, I wanted to start off by asking you, like, um, how did you get started in music? How did it all get started for you? Man, it was kind of... So in like 2017, I think I was in high school. I was like a junior at the time. I ran, I've always been like into music and I was like, you know what? I'm about to release a, f a freestyle on Twitter. And I was like, screw it. Like, we'll see what happens. And it was to pound cake by Drake. And okay. it just, it literally ha it got like thousands of likes. And I was like, snap. And I knew my buddy grew up, my buddy who was my neighbor at the time was in a band. So, and he knew how to like record and stuff like that. So we just started and it turned into something bigger. So you said kind of funny. to 2017, you were in high school. So how old are you? I'm 21. Oh, shit. You're a baby. Okay. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I just turned 21 in May, so. Oh, damn. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm a youngin. So who would you say inspired you to kind of take it to that next level? Hmm. Man, see, like, hip-hop has been my whole entire life since I was little. Like, my aunt, like, everyone in my family always listened to hip-hop. And my mom was in a band. She was a lead singer in a band. So music was always something that I used to do. Like I used to write music on the side when I was young. And I think just it helped me. It helped me when I was going through a lot of stuff and it was a way for me to vent. So I think like me for in life inspired me to start making music. You know what I mean? Just going through shit Heck, and yeah. being able to vent and express how I felt. Okay. So what is like, so what does vulnerability mean for you? I think everything because mu I think music should be like the good, like the beauty of life and the ugly. You know what I mean? Everything. I don't sugarcoat anything. Like if something's going exactly. on, I say it. So, well, like your new your new single, thick thick skin. You're you're kind of talking about how you you're going through stuff and people keep like you know bringing stuff, trying to throw shit at you, but you know you're able to kind of brush it off. Cause yeah, man, just keep going. Like that's that's my thing. No matter, even if I have like some songs that are sad or whatever, I'll never let that phase stop me from keep going forward into progressing as a person. Like in my music, like I don't let the negativity. Even if I talk about it, I'm not gonna let it hold me back from going forward. Yeah, yeah. right. I think, I, I think, I think that's, that's important. What, I think that's what sets aside an, um, a good musician from somebody who's just in it for the likes. You know, you're doing yeah, it because 100%. it's like a form of healing and. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that can actually connect more to what, what your message is saying when you are being vulnerable. So I think that's definitely one of your major strong points for me. I think, you know, I, I'm not you, speaking yeah, for everyone. For sure. No, well, I, yeah, I mean, I music, that. music is a way to like, you know, express, express yourself and music is a way to, you know, find people that or find them, you know, people that make music that you can relate to. And, you know, when people are doing that, that's when I feel like they're good. They're, you know, being true to themselves and true to the art yeah man and that's what's important to me is like being true to myself i like to make a ton of different types of styles of music and just i yeah i just try to be myself and keep it real <laughs> just keep it real man so could you say so, so could you say you can freestyle you said you you posted a freestyle um the pound cake would you be able to like i'm not i'm not saying i'm gonna put on a beat for you but if i were to put on a beat for you you could freestyle like nothing or what eh, i haven't did i haven't did it since then dude <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, you give me a f you give me a few hits of something, and maybe I'll be able to. But nah, nah, yeah. I'm not the best freestyler. I just like, to, but I can write my ass off. You know what I mean? Like, I write, I write like two songs a day, dude. Like nothing. God damn. Nice. So who are, who are some of your favorite uh, artists that, that you're uh, listening? Do you guys do you guys know who Nothing Nowhere is? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Nothing. Oh, he's a super talented artist. Uh, nothing Nowhere, like Lou Christopher. Like to be honest, I've been listening to a lot more like r&b type or like punk rock type music that's mm -hmm. great like i make hip-hop the most but like next year for the most part i'm doing a lot more singing stuff and a blend of like different genres but i love like mgk's last album was probably my favorite album of the year what tickets to my downfall yeah, yeah the more yeah. alternative type stuff yeah it's just like the wave i've been on lately it's just been inspiring me i have to change it up because if i just rap all the time my brain gets like fried man <laughs> like it's so hard being super lyrical all the time it's like i just gotta have fun and like change it up well that's why i tried that it's funny because a lot of people that i know are make a certain genre they don't even listen to that genre you know they kind of listen every now yeah. and again to just get inspiration but they listen to other stuff because they're so focused on you know making that music they just yeah break. i was talking to someone the other day about it. i was like so much music has dropped in 2021 but there hasn't really been a project this year that's inspired me to 
like as a hip hop artist to write more. It was more so, okay, this was good this week. And it's like on to the next one. It, it hasn't been too many that if, it, every once in a while there's that album that hits you and it's like, damn, I'm going to write an album this week. Like, let's go. But <laughs> other genres have done that for me. And I think like this year I released an acoustic album and a rap album and like did a bunch of different genres and it helped me. It helped me grow that and like try to separate myself from other people. Okay. So like when you're practicing, let's say uh, you're writing some new lyrics to a song, uh, so how do you, how do how do your practices look like? Do you have any like exercises that you do in particular to kind of make it flow? To be honest, I just put the beat on my computer and use voice memos and try to come up with like the melodies and stuff like that, and then go back and like add the lyrics and take it one song at a time. But usually when I go to the studio, I'll just like I love to add a shit ton of harmonies and and keep building on what I have until it's like perfect. So it's just like little steps, but for the most part voice memos it was the savior of 2020 for me <laughs> and have you done any like live performances recently i did too last year but there's not really anything going on right now i was supposed to no. go on tour with justin stone and ryan oaks this year okay it was like it and it got canceled like the day before did you like fuck up during those performances or, or nah. anything like no nah, man. nah all right so if, if you if you did make a mistake during a performance what are some things that you think you would do to kind of like how would you handle see, that see i'm like super like nervous before performances but then once like anything starts no matter what it is like a sporting event or whatever it was like i'm completely like mentality changes and i I don't think i would even care i just keep going dude like it is what it is i'm totally comfortable with being myself and being like a goofball so i just be like ah let's go and the the thing about live music that's like the beauty of it it's you know yeah. like, like we, we talked about vulnerability if i can fucking speak english is hard <laughs> uh you know being uh, seeing a live performance i want to see the, the raw you know fuck up yeah, my, yeah. Uh, when we used to play our drummer yeah, used man. to fuck up all the time or we would fuck up i would forget lyrics and shit like that it's just you know that's the nature of it dude we're human man yeah like, exactly it's part of life. it is what it is i feel like if if you play it off cool you're fine you know if you panic then you're screwed <laughs> yeah yeah okay so what advice would you give to some beginners, uh, beginning artists who are actually going out there trying to play shows if they're nervous as well? Like, Man, I feel like, truthfully, I haven't played enough to give an honest answer, but I would just say go out there, give as much energy as you can because they feed off you. And even if the crowd isn't good, just keep going and give it all you have because at the end of the day, at least you know you gave it your all. And just try your best to get the crowd involved and do what you can. Yeah. But yeah, just just leave it all out there, dude. Like, Just go crazy. <laughs> No. no one wants to. No one wants to see someone just standing there doing nothing. Like, no, you know, no, you gotta have some in. kind of stage. Man, I don't care. If, I don't care shit. if you gotta jump in the crowd and like tackle someone. Like, let's go. Hit somebody with your bass. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, yeah. I went. I went to this show and this guy was literally. I, I, I mean, his rap was not. His rapping was not good at, at all. And I don't want to talk shit, but he was literally <laughs> just jumping in one place, just jumping up and down in one spot. Yeah. And the crowd <laughs> booed him off the stage. Literally booed him off the stage. I he feel threw like a that tantrum, <laughs> dude. Dude, you know what's kind of crazy just to think about how Drake got booed up, like booed in 2020. Like that's crazy. Like no matter who you are, you can get booed. I don't like that would suck, man. I don't want to get booed off stage. Though. J- Justin that's Bieber like... got kicked out of that Argentina um, show because he was like stomping on the flag and he got booed off. That's, Damn. that's messed up, man. Yeah, he Why got banned from Argentina. On flag? That's kind of disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So, Written in Stone, you wrote that with King Blitz. And hey, hell yeah. King Blitz was the one, you know, kind of referred us to you. And he said that you are one of the hardest working people he's ever met. Thank you, man. Yeah, I'm a perfectionist, dude, and I just, I don't stop, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't stop. That Honestly, is... dude, I'm glad you brought that album up because I dropped so freaking much. I'm like, oh, my God, that came out this year? Let's go. <laughs> he, so he, he was saying that he was like, I feel so bad. And I don't know if you if you heard that podcast yet. He was like, I feel so bad because I felt like I was dragging him down. He was like, dude, I, like, he he was talking about you he was like he was like he could sit there and just finish writing everything that he needed and i was like dude i need i need a few more days i need a few more days and he's like fuck like he's a busy ass dude like he has like four kids freaking a wife like has he's doing his youtube like his reactions and his music and i'm just like he sends me the first and i'm like hey bro it's in your email he's like i just sent it to you like 42 minutes ago i'm like yeah it's in your email (laughs) (laughs) i was like what done just just sent you a new demo like what's next let's go 
and I was <laughs> yeah, it was it was really fun making that with him though. And we ended up for the last couple songs we we linked up in person for like a week and made the final touches and we recorded like seven videos in a span of two days. It was crazy. It was fun, man. What was your favorite song to write about, uh, in that album? Oh, man. I got to think right now. Dude, there was a lot. There was a lot that I really liked. Um, the intro was super hard, dude. The back and forth that we did. And uh, Pray for Change was the deepest song. But my favorite verse that I did on the album was probably be Truth Hurts or Adrenaline. I'm curious. Did you ask him this? Did he say what his favorite was? No, or? I didn't. I didn't ask him. I just thought it's of hard, his question. Dude, that, <laughs> that, that album had a lot of like, like we did a song called violence that was really talked about what's going on right now in terms of like, like injustice and stuff like that. And there, were, there was a, every song had a purpose and we tried to make as many different vibes as we could. So overall it was just, it was really fun working with him and uh, we might do a part two. We'll see what's up. People would you, get pretty hyped when me and him drop. Are you guys going to like brand yourself as, uh, kind of like a unit or just always gonna nah. be separate no nah. like I'll what never do a... black bear and mike posner did a whole album yeah. called mansions, mansions. Yeah, yeah yeah love that album dude oh that's fucking badass ever. huh like yeah. they, that one makes black you Bear's feel one of my favorite artists too he Literally. i saw him live twice i've seen him live four times <laughs> digital drug lord tour was like one of the best things i ever went i saw to, him man. for the digital drug lord i saw him for the anonymous which was the most recent one hell yeah before he stopped and then i saw him at a club he was like hosting at a club which he only played like two fucking songs and i was like standing right in damn, front of him damn my buddy saw him for fallout boy too when he opened up for him oh damn yeah blackbird was pretty much what got me into like the newer poppier stuff i now he's like super fucking poppy this new yeah, album man. is like hell poppy but so what it's what all good. what kind of artist do you listen to now um as far as in your scene um and what do you think about the newer main street um, artists like the mumble rappers and the uh i i hate that <laughs> i hate like mumble rap and stuff like that but i'm also totally not against like you don't have to be an insane lyricist for me to like you i'm more like on structure and melodies and stuff like that like dylan reese i i love him you guys ever listened to him before or no no not yet okay because I, I saw you had abstract on and they have a lot of songs together but they um i'm trying to think who else i love king blitz i listen to him a lot to be honest but hmm. what do you think about I know, like man. young thug or uh uzi, nah, see, I, little uzi nah, or man. i can't <laughs> i just think like he see they seem like all right dudes but like they're just so overhyped man like i don't see it dude it's just not for me you know what i mean yeah i listen uh, you know i'm i'm i like making music jake likes making music so we when we listen to something we kind of like criticize or critique it in a, as a musicians or artist you know kind of standpoint and every time i listen we just to kind of help music, each other out you know we're like okay i think 100%. this part could use a little more but you know, but when just... i listen to their music it's just like what is it's literally just a beat that's like that's everything i don't understand i just don't i don't know what like how people look themselves like in the mirror and say like this is good i mean hey if you like it you like it you know what i mean but i'm just like dude like i would rather like whack my head against a wall like like that song what was it the one where he literally just says gucci yeah, yeah. whatever or i'm like what the fuck <laughs> to me to me like you're in music though like a voice is everything a person can be a great singer a great lyricist but if i don't like the sound of your voice i can't listen to your music like there's some there's some artists that you know it's like damn this dude has a gr like super talented but his voice is annoying like there was a guy on fun funk volume like back in the day when hobson was in there uh swizz like his voice is just annoying i couldn't listen to him <laughs> yeah so that's how i feel about kendrick i think he's in a like I, I listen to his lyric or like i read his lyrics and i like see how he makes the music and it's just amazing but his voice just fucking annoys the shit out of me it's and not I can't. yeah I there's can't. always that artist that you just try like that's for me it's chance the rapper i can't get into him okay. because i think his voice is so it's annoying, annoying yeah my girl said the same thing she was like i can't, I can't. like he sounds like mickey mouse to me <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and i hate oh, yeah. i hate criticizing people like i'm so like i'm not i had to stop watching like a lot of reactions because i'm just like you know if you like the music you like it if you don't it's okay but at the end of the day, like if I'm happy with the music that I make and, and the fans connect and it reaches some people and it helps them, that's really all I care about. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, I mean, kind of in our our role, like we kind of talk about like all music and I'm not saying fuck their music sucks. I'm not saying oh, they're, no, they're horrible man, people for making that music. I just, I just that's not bad. just not for me. But facts, facts. It's I'm, not for me. Nah, yeah. It's not for me. <laughs> 
Unless you're like a Wisconsin stripper or something. Oh my god. <laughs> did Did you know that that Tyga is the most bumped in in um, strip clubs? Like his music is the most played in man, any strip club. Man, that probably makes club. like Rack City, dude. That song Rack was crazy City, yeah. in middle school. <laughs> like Rack City just probably made him like freaking. I don't even want to know how much money he made off that. Oh my god. I. I I was so it's a funny story. We were at the um, Nick Choice Awards. Me and my girlfriend, she got like oh, tickets, I so I you know went to go s- see him. And I was like standing and watching before I went to go get my seat. And Tiger was literally just standing right in front of me. I was Damn, just like, man. "Fuck! I want. Can I say something? I, am I allowed to like go up to them or whatever?" <laughs> uh, hey, bro. <laughs> anyways, so you're. Releasing a new song tomorrow, which actually... Oh, oh shit! <laughs> you gotta keep that in as a blooper. <laughs> <laughs> so you release a new song tomorrow, which actually will be out by the time this podcast airs. What can you tell, yeah, tell us man. about that? Dude, this one's special, dude. Like, this is... I'm counting this for next year. Like, we are starting, like, the new era. This is on my next album, and we're about to take it to a new level, dude. It's a super deep song. The chorus, my buddy sang on the chorus and produced it. Super, super talented. It's actually the first song that he's ever sang on. Like I always known he was a talented producer, but he sent me he sent me a hook for, to the song, and I was like, dude, like your voice is incredible, man. Like this is crazy. So it's what really is it, what is it about? I mean, people are already gonna listen to it. This is it's it's gonna release on Monday. It's just super vulnerable. Just about I don't know. Just like like just I'm trying to think. Let me think of the words real quick. <laughs> it's, i don't know man it's, dude you it's write you write song. too much dude you need to get I know. like <laughs> you have like a library yeah man <laughs> like i just finished an, like an album today like right in my last song so i'm trying to like go back and put my head in that mind that mind space it's like take me to the place where you and i can hide away it's like it's basically finding an escape that's really what it is it's it's about it's, love uh, though kind all right of. so yeah, yeah that's so if you're writing too. like literally all the time how do you balance your music with like life obligations you know whether or not you have a girlfriend or a job or whatever how do you how do you she's balance standing that? right next to me right now <laughs> i mean it's hard sometimes she definitely wants to hurt me sometimes don't you because <laughs> i write so much <laughs> you at the end of the day like you just have to make time for the people that you love you know what i mean it's oh, it's yeah. super hard and, and being an artist is is definitely hard to balance and a lot of people don't see it from the outside you really have to be on the inside of this like to understand but yeah, man, you just make time for the people that you love. That's really what it so comes how down often, to. So how often are you usually, like, writing and, and, like, practicing out of the day? Like, if you can cut it up into segments. I usually wake up, either I'm going to the studio or I'm writing. <laughs> like, that's literally what it comes down to. <laughs> now I, writing, now like, I know why she wants man. to hit you sometimes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and the problem is, like, we'll be in the middle of a conversation, and I'm always thinking of melodies. So she'll be like... Hey babe, can you go? Yeah, yeah, da, 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 da. like you know what I mean. Like I'll be, I don't even mean it to be rude. Dude. Just shut the fuck up. Just stop. Yes, yes, yes. I, I can't stop, bro. I'm thinking about stop music doing the things I love you for. Damn it! It's hard, dude, because I don't mean it to be rude. I'm just constantly thinking of songs. Like I'm obsessed. Like it is what it is. Yeah, Some man. artists are just obsessed. Like it's a passion, like, carries man. A that's, that's, that's awesome. Well, it's it's like, are you gonna tell a painter to stop painting? Are you gonna tell a, a writer to stop writing? Are you gonna you know yeah it's it's and hard she, when it's your like, life and everyone knows i'm not gonna stop like it's just it's just me dude and i think what helps me the most like people always ask me like oh how do you not have writer's block by now because you write so much but i make so much different styles of music and if i'm not feeling rapping i'm gonna sing if i if i don't feel like singing today i'm gonna make like a punk rock song you know what i mean i try to always change it up and keep keep things fresh that makes it easier for you though because you yeah. uh, you could use maybe an old melody and something and change it up a little bit and yeah use it as a if music. i couldn't if i couldn't sing i don't think i would make music because rapping all the time would drive me nuts like i love to sing way more than rap okay. and that was so actually was rapping and singing, yeah. do you play other instruments no i don't i need to learn though luckily okay. i've been surrounded by talented people like i just i have friends and a team that is, are great at producing and stuff like that I think I what would you want to learn to, first? I really want to learn the, like how to play the guitar and piano, because I just did a piano song like two days ago, and I was like, and that, that I sing on, and I was like, man, I wish I could play this music vibe. video. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. So you have, you have any like fond musical <laughs> memories? Honestly, dropping a song, I had my first song hit a hundred thousand plays in a week last week with Justin Stone. Was that so that, that was, uh, antidote? Yeah, so that was a good feeling because me and him have been talking about collabing for like three years. So he was like the first big artist that um, 
really reached out to me and said keep going and stuff so it was dope everything's like coming full circle and just yeah. i would say i would say this year just like i went to that cookout cypher for youtube and met with a bunch of big people and was like talking to futuristic and a few people that i looked up to for a long time it just seems like compared to last year i'm in a completely different point in my life and i'm like wow things are actually finally starting to work out do you I think like, mm-hmm. do you think covid uh helped with that no, be, it's weird. Yes and no, because I couldn't shoot videos for a certain amount of point and I didn't get to record for a little while because at the time when I was at, before I moved, I just moved to Ohio, but when I was living in Massachusetts, I didn't have my own setup. I was recording with my buddies. So I went through like a two month phase where we were on lockdown and their parents wouldn't let me come over and stuff. So that hurt and it hurt me because I couldn't go on that tour, mm. but it also helped me be able to write a lot because I was home. Like we were all, everyone was stuck at the house. I was just writing and I was able to make a lot of connections and the music was just doing, starting to do good. So I just collabed a lot. I think that was important to start growing. I really started doing a lot more collaborations and is it's it, dope working with people that you looked up to for a while. Is that your, like, um, you, do you think that's your strongest way of marking yourself as c- collaborations or how do, how do you think you're no, going to collaborate I think, I th- or sorry, I think, market? Um, I think collaborations help a lot, but I'm lucky that even though I'm small, I have a really diehard fan base that goes crazy for me. Like I get like it's I don't understand how I get so many interactions with only like four thousand followers, but they just go crazy for me, man. And at the end of the day, I think that's what's gonna, that's what's always gonna, they're always gonna be there for me. So I think that's gonna help. So you did talk about collaborations. Is there any one that's big time that you would just be like, oh, I, I want to play a show with this guy. I, I want, I want something. I want. To be on the uh, record I know you said you didn't know who they were, uh, knew who, knew who it was, but nothing nowhere, man. Like he's my favorite artist, like. He's from Vermont, and I've always wanted to work with him, and I'm, he inspires okay. me so much. But and probably NF too. So, yeah. So there's so many talented people, bro. It's hard. It's, it, when it, you guys ask me that, it's like, oh. you know, you're you're talking about how your fan base is like hella die, you know, diehard, and it's crazy because you have fifty-seven thousand monthly listeners. Yeah, and that just started really going up, like in the past like two months. So I mean, it, it. I looked at your numbers, and besides Antidote, which you know was just released, your numbers don't aren't that high. So you could tell that your fan base is constantly playing your shit. Yeah, that Sharing that's the craziest part. Like around. I had, I had, um, I think three songs or four songs this year get over like eighty or ninety thousand streams. But even with only like seventeen hundred follow uh no what I have two thousand followers on Spotify. Like those two thousand just go so hard. Like and I have group chats that people will stream all night and that's that's how I've been able to get collaborations a lot of the, most of the times because fans are just constantly I hate calling them fans because I'm like really friends with a lot of them. Like they're like family to me, but they share the music like crazy and tag people and like yo work with work with Eli, work with Eli like always always pinching me out to reactors and artists and different people that I say I want to work with. So I, I'm thankful for them. And that's really how I've been able to grow. Yeah, I've gotten <laughs> I've gotten a few comments saying uh, interview uh, Elijah, interview Elijah. <laughs> yeah, I'll make sure like once it's out, they'll definitely they'll definitely run it up, bro. For sure. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, so, so you got you got a real big talent in music. Um, do you have Thank any you, useless man. talents outside of it? Um, like random ass talents? Yeah, just something random as fuck. Uh, I'm a state champion bowler. Oh shit! So you got a nice bowled, curve, huh? I bowled the, nice. the three hundred when I was like sixteen. Fuck. So, how much street cred did you get from being a, a bowler? <laughs> Doug, I didn't. That, let's just say that definitely didn't get me any uh, any girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, for real. I, I didn't tell anyone about it. Like, it, like my girlfriend like, was like shocked one day because we went bowling and I got like eight strikes in a row. And she's like, "Do you like bowl or something?" I was like, "I don't tell people." <laughs> Who goes up to that's like, that's like going up to someone and be like, "Yeah, I like I don't know." I like, so, I like golf or something. so <laughs> hey girl, I wear clown shoes and uh, and I croquet. <laughs> <laughs> and I play badminton on the weekend. <laughs> oh. Nah, yeah. but basically besides, dude, like, I'm super, I'm super, mu- my life is music and sports. Besides, like, I'm, like, in, in terms of hobbies and stuff. My whole entire life, my mom and my parents would get so mad at me. I hate everything. Don't ask me to go to the zoo. <laughs> don't ask me to ride, uh, go on roller coasters. Don't ask me to do anything. If you tell me you want to go play sports or, or do something with music, I'm in. If not, like, I'm miserable. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> That's good. how it goes. That's how it goes. Like, basketball basketball soccer tennis like those are my three that i was captain at and then anything uh, competitive bowling. yeah anything competitive dude like i'm in let's go that's bowling uh, that, i mean that's a archery bro dude imagine though wait 
imagine writing a bowl a rap song about bowling. Imagine the yeah. bowling community though, eh? Hey? You could you could get some a big. Dude, I got right I got I definitely have to shoot a video like a bowling video. We were talking about it. <laughs> like some old school, like '90s freaking disco bowling shit. <laughs> hey, yeah. speaking of '90s though, '90s baby. Is, hey, let's go! I love hey, that song. Hey, that's man. that's that was my favorite song from that new album. Hell yeah! Thanks, yeah. dude. Oh. That that was more just like a little project that I had. I wasn't even gonna call it an album. It was more like an EP, just kind of a start of like a new type of sound. That was me finding. I'm finally starting to find like my my voice and my niche, definitely. Yeah, I okay. I I listened to that one and I was just like, oh damn. Okay. Did you watch the video for that song? No, I didn't watch the video. Dude, you have to watch the video, man. It's crazy. It's so right. funny. It's, as, it's as completely soon as this is over, I'm going to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. So if it wasn't for music, what, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Bowling. Is, music or sports? If there, was no, if there was no bowling, no music, what do you think Dude, else? Like, I don't want to, but like I would probably just go to – I'd be a teacher probably. I didn't go to college. I dropped out. But my dad's a teacher, and I, I like history. Like, And if, if it came down – if I had to, it came down to it, I would rather do that and take summers off then. But I can't, I can't even think about it. I can't yeah, put myself hard. in that <laughs> mindset because I've been going so hard for like three years of like not taking a day off just because like – there's no possible way after making it even this far that I could stop and be like, yeah, I'm just going to have like a, not, and, you know, I'm not r- ragging people, but I'm saying like an ordinary, you know what I mean? Some like no, but day job. It's it's crazy because you're, you're so young. You still got so much time to, and I'm not saying you're not going to blow up in the next year. What I'm saying is you still have so much time to get to the point where you, you know, yeah, I, I, I guess you, the bro. point of people, no return. And people always say it to me. They're like, they're like, you're so much farther than other people were at like 21. But I try not to look at it like that because I feel like if you keep, if you have that mindset, you wake up and you're 29. You know what I mean? Yeah, the yeah, next yeah. day, it's like time for. I'm like, yeah. I gotta go now. Like, and you, you can't compare yourself now. to others too. You know, you're kind of in your own journey, I guess. Exactly. Um, and- yeah, man. Everyone's come up is different, and that's something <clears> I had to learn. Like, I can't. I, I, in the age of social media today, all we do is compare ourselves to everyone yeah. else, and we like we don't have the 500 legs. We're not gonna we're not gonna blow up but i know i know friends that have a thousand followers on social media that just have a way bigger following than other people it's just it, everyone's different like it, you literally find your niche you stick with it and you do what works for you and i try to always think outside of the box and change it up and just be me at the end of the day well yeah you have what four thousand followers on instagram and you have a way more loyal and i would say bigger fan base than people that have like sixty thousand followers you know? Yeah, man, because a lot of people pay pay for that stuff. You know what I mean? It's just not it's not worth it. It's not. It's crazy. I had someone hit me up the other day. I was talking to my buddy about this yesterday. It's like you have someone DM you like acting like, yo, yo, do a song with me because they have like 30,000 followers. But it's you can tell it's fake because they have no likes. I'm like, you got like they're trying to use that as leverage. You know what I mean? In terms of think like they're better than other people. But it's like, dude, like, come on, man. It's not it's not worth buying followers. Yeah. yeah. I would say that you asked me before about like uh, advice too for artists. Like it's not worth it. It's really it's it's not worth it. Like build build a fan base, and at the end of the day, like if you want to be an independent artist, I think it's it's the best way to go. Just build your fan base, keep dropping consistently. Earn it, you know, yeah, earn it, man. Like it makes it, it it's worth more in the end, dude. Yeah, and you'll have so people that, that will back you up no matter what. What's the best advice that you've ever been given? Something that just sticks I, through oh, man. and through. Honestly, like in turn, like I had a buddy just say, like consistently drop great content. That's as simple as it sounds. Never give up and consistently drop like great content, because at the end of the day, you're gonna have the. If you want to get signed, you're gonna have the leverage, and if not, like you have something fans can look back to and have a catalog of great content, and yeah, just consistency, man. Like just be consistent, and I think right now it's it's hard for a lot of artists because. You can drop an album that's amazing, but the way the, the audience works right now, people are they're like, oh, what's what's next? Like, you'll drop an album on a Friday. People are like, oh, what are you dropping on Monday? It's hard. If you're a small artist, like, albums aren't worth it right now. Even people that I know that have a million monthly listeners, aren't even, are, if they drop an album, they're dropping 12 singles, and then the rest come out. It's just hard right now because the market and corona hurt a lot of streaming. Yeah. So, well, I mean, if it weren't for the internet, how hard do you think it would be to actually put yourself out there you know I yeah think that, you, yeah. see that's fuck we're lucky. Lucky. yeah we're lucky for that like i can't imagine back then you just have to be passing out cds in the streets and stuff like that like, <laughs> hey listen to my mixtape listen to my mixtape yeah. Like, yeah. yeah man like it must have been i can't relate because i i didn't, I didn't go through that but it must have well, been crazy dude you know we we're from 
I think what we had a band in what 2009, no, 2010, 2011 ish. Yo, think about that. So, yeah, so, oh, fuck, I fucking feel old now. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, we had, we still had the internet. We still had the MySpace. You know, back then it was MySpace. That's where we promoted MySpace. Let's go. That's where we promoted most of our music. But even then, it was fucking hard. It was hard promoting your music. We didn't have like Spotify wasn't a thing, you know. Reverb Nation yeah, was like our best tool for kind of promoting music. It was like datpiff.com. <laughs> <laughs> so d- you could imagine now you have unlimited fucking resources. Like you. So to count it, like to say that though, you know what sucks too? Like the algorithms now. It's like, it's like Instagram's algorithm and like Twitter and other things are so trash now yeah. that it's almost that you have to like pay to see your own, like your own fans to see your posts. Like how do I have 4,000 followers but my last post had 400 like interactions like it's crazy that like unless you get a lot of comments and shares like your own followers won't see your post and uh, even on spotify like you don't make release radar every time now that's why people Damn, are going it's like crazy. do i need to send a dm to everyone that follows me shit yeah that's why people are talking about that payola thing because spotify was supposed to raise our money this year how much we made and instead they dropped it and they were like oh yeah if you pay this much money we'll pitch your music to like your release radar and playlists like that's that was that's like saying you're we have to pay you for our own followers to see our stuff. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. Oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I think we need to, you know what? I think we need to generate some fucking, uh, some traffic for them, you know? Hit them up and be like, nah, we're going to fucking. <laughs> my buddy was like, man, I hope I get big enough someday where I can start my own platform that artists don't get screwed on. Seriously. I was like, going to need a lot of money, but I feel you, man. You're going to need, need a lot of fucking money, especially for yep. building an empire like that. That they pretty much built an empire. I wonder how Spotify actually started. I don't know. That would be interesting. Let's I've see. never really looked into it. It's definitely label stuff. It's definitely somebody just like, should buy Spotify out and then make it actually to help the artists. I know. Of I know Distro Kids. Distro Kids, my um, distributor, and they just they're a part of like Spotify now, which probably isn't good because all like the the thing everyone's joining like the labels and all that stuff. Man, I don't know. Everything you don't think is involved with labels and stuff like that and all that industry BS is it's just becoming really Well what are some things uh, that you'd change about the industry? Stop having whack ass people man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would say artists need to get freaking paid more for streams. I, I think know. that I would say it needs to be hmm. I don't know, man. I just think the the playing field needs to be fair, man. Mm-hmm. Like people get screwed, dude, and you shouldn't have to have these con you shouldn't even if you're Justin Bieber or you're a, a Kanye, you shouldn't have to worry about someone owning your your masters and your music for your whole entire life. Like, you're little like it's crazy. Like how one word in a contract can change the rest of your life. You really have to be careful. Fine print that you can't fucking see. Yeah, I know. So what, Man, what's, honestly, your, what's your ultimate goal, though? My ultimate goal, dude, is just to to live comfortably off music. I don't care about being crazy famous and just be able to provide for my family and just be happy. Like music makes me happy. And I feel like if I'm at a point where I'm not struggling to pay the bills and I'm able to wake up every morning and create, I don't care if it's 70 grand a year. Like I'm happy. Like I'm chilling. Do you want to get signed? To... Uh, it, truthfully, I don't think so, but it's going to depend on where I am at that point in time. Because if I, sometimes you can get lucky and find an actual like label that cares about you. Like, I, like, like NF and, or like some few other people, but if I'm if I'm broke at the time and someone's like, "Yo, we'll offer you twenty million dollars," it's gonna be hard to take it down. But I really don't yeah. see myself ever signing, and I'm definitely not giving away my masters ever. Like, you're not getting more than fifteen percent or ten like of, of my music. Yeah. So, I feel like no, I don't think I'll ever sign. I I think I'm I'm I'm, I'm on the way. You know what I mean? I'm on the right path, and it's only a matter of time. Like, and it's starting to go up. There's so many there's so many artists that could do it without a label. You could do you yeah, can man. do it. There's a way. Like even Russ, Russ is independent now. I mean, he was signed. Don't get me. He was signed. Yeah, for a while, he just got. Was... He just got the rights to uh, yep. most of his songs. I don't think he got the rights to all of his songs. But man, that dude's posting his TuneCore numbers, freaking put, getting 150 to 200 thousand just off TuneCore. Never mind everything else. Like, yeah. that's ridiculous. So, um, Spotify was founded in 2006 to kind of as a response to the you know the pirating music yeah. so they were like gonna offer free music to everyone with small advertisements and then later in two years they started you know 
giving people um, money. So they started paying people to post their music on the okay. site. Yeah, it's crazy. It wasn't that long ago. I mean, 2006, only like 11 years ago. That's crazy. I mean, 14 years is a long time. 14. But, um, oh, 14, yeah. 14. Yeah, it's crazy oh, how much different it is now. 14, yeah. Damn. Because they, they had, their main competition was Napster. Um, yeah. LimeWire. I don't even I don't even remember them. Oh my god, dude, you were a little baby, dude. <laughs> LimeWire. Dude, I was like dude. I was like seven years old, bro. Oh my god, dude. LimeWire uh, with LimeWire, it was the easiest way to get music, but the also the easiest fucking way to get a virus on your computer. Dude. Oh man. The, so back with LimeWire, you would de- you'd find all the songs. You would have to look like for individual songs and people would post them so you know sometimes they come all screwed up sometimes they're not even the right song they're mislabeled and shit yeah so you find the right songs you download them and then you burn them onto a cd and then you have like all kinds of burnt cds in your car damn man (laughs) oh my god dude that's how that's how that's how i downloaded all my music you know before limewire man i was recording shit off of the radio onto a damn tape Dude, cassette, my, dude. my my first phone oh. my first phone i you know in the voicemails people have those voicemail playbacks i would record yeah. i would put it next to a uh like a boom box to record my voicemail man there's <laughs> no way you guys are that old though dude <laughs> and 28 I, january I, I don't think i don't think it's it's the age i think it's more i grew up poor so i couldn't afford anything else i feel you bro i feel you man oh god dude this shit was crazy it's crazy though, like just the evolution of everything and where we are today. Yeah, yeah, it's you know it's great for the music. I think, like yeah, you, it's like you said, there's, there's to reach people. Like you said, there's a lot of things that the music industry has to improve, like paying you know the uh, artists more, not completely fucking them in the ass when they make <laughs> yeah. you sign contracts and shit like that. But I think it's it's easier way to get your message out there, get your music out there and show people 100 percent, dude and i think and i think like we're starting to see a lot more independent artists take over like it's definitely i think like in a few years like i don't know what labels are going to do obviously people are always going to want to sign but they're going to have to like give people better deals and do stuff because independent starting to take over like i know so many friends that are that are really living comfortably off music independent yeah i mean look, look at black bear black bear was independent and still independent he's still independent it, you can make millions and millions. He started his own label. Yeah, Bear Trap. Bear Trap. Yeah. yeah. And he signed what? what? Who did he sign? Uh, who's that guy that was from G's to Gents? I don't know. Oh, 24? No, no, 24 no. 24 hours? No. No, it was uh, that dude with the crazy hair, fucking white dude with uh, those. The chain? Oh. Dude, what the fuck is his name? Riff Raff. Riff Raff. Yeah, the chain. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why he's got awful, but whatever. he's he's fucking horrible. I think it's it's. I think that was more of a fame thing. He was like, yeah, 100%. people loved him because of his fucking insane character. Yeah, his swagger. Yeah, that motherfucker got in some trouble. Leads me to my next question: You ever gotten into some crazy trouble? I mean, I I mean, I feel like I have, but I've never gotten arrested. So, dude, he's a bowler. How how much trouble can he get? <laughs> hey, I've definitely not. I've definitely knocked some people out, but nah, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't uh, really gotten into much trouble. I mean, when I, like the most trouble I've gotten is I got caught breaking into an ice cream place with my buddies at, at this campground, and we, the cops came and got kicked out forever. I, I'm pretty. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've I've could have gotten trouble many times. I just I don't get caught because I'm pretty fast, and you're gonna have to be a freaking pretty good athlete of a cop when I'm jumping over a fence. Yeah, good luck with that twenty fucking pound <laughs> belt they're wearing and shit. Yeah, <laughs> good luck. Good, good luck trying to. Good luck trying to catch me, bro. <laughs> this crazy when you oh, watch those man. videos of like the people getting chased, and there's this guy that fucking was jumping from roof to roof. And, like yeah, the cop dude, was like, cool. where, cool. "Where the fuck is he, <laughs> dude?" At this point, I just be like, "Bro, I'm gonna shoot you. Like you're done." <laughs> yeah, fuck that shit. I'm not gonna look stupid. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm done. So, you know, you, you're talking about how you know 2021 is gonna be like the year that defines you. Yeah, man. So, I'm friggin' ready, dude. What What exactly are you working on? I know you're working I already on a new got, album. I'm, I already have releases uploaded until July. Goddamn. Already ready. Ready to go. I'm I'm dropping every single week the whole entire year and dropping albums on top of it. Fuck. Dope. Like, damn, when, I, br- I, when I tell you, I don't, I don't know if people are going to appreciate it at this time. When I tell you we're going on one of the craziest runs ever next year, like, we really are, dude. Like, my next album has, like, R&B 
hip hop beat switches, like four different beats on songs, EDM, acoustic, punk rock, like straight and like the MGK album type vibes, like everything, man. Like I'm just coming for every genre next year, dude. Hell yeah. Seriously. Dude. So when it, you say you're going to be working on more uh, singing style than rap. Yeah, for sure. So, so how are, okay. So, um, are you taking any like vocal lessons or are you just self-taught or how are you self-taught man? Self-taught. I sing like right. I, I sing on Fallen, like my last album. I sang on like every single chorus, but th- I'm just, yeah, I can sing, but yeah, I don't know. I just kind of learned. My mom's one of the best singers I've ever heard in my life, so I think I got it a little bit from her. I can't sing as good as her, but get her, as get, long as, get her on you, one of your songs, <laughs> dude. I've been saying that for, since I started music. And I don't know why I haven't yet. So let's go. That's the new. That's the the next dude, song. I need to. Move, she's like, you, she's like, you better hurry up. She's like, I just had kids, like, and I'm like 51 years old. So like, you before my voice is gone, you better freaking get me on. She's like, I probably got like three more years of like some dude, like, really get high the fuck, notes. You write so many <laughs> fucking songs. You could write a song for your mom. <laughs> Come on, bro. It's just like weird, man. My mom's busy, dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, man. do you? What's one message you have for your fans that are listening right now? I would just say, tell them how grateful I am. Like, I love, I love you guys so much, and I'm excited for next year. And I appreciate everyone that's always constantly supporting. Like, it's crazy, man. I'm hard to keep up with. Like, I drop every single week, and no matter Apparently, what. Apparently, you're locked and loaded for like months. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I drop every single week, and they still always show love, spread the music, and like, they're my label. You guys are my label. So if you want us to grow, I just ask share the music, and keep supporting, man. I don't know. Nothing but love, dude. Like, it's real. Like, they go so hard for me. I, I don't know what I did to deserve it, but I appreciate it so much. So what would you say to someone that hasn't heard you um, and, like, any of our listeners that haven't heard you? Um, what would you say about yourself that they, you know, they would get from it? I would say if you're a fan of, like, ly- like lyricism and you care about lyrics and hip-hop and you care and you're open to liking an artist that tries to experiment and do it, a lot of different types of music then i would say i'm for you i'm more so a lot of my music's very deep and if you like vulnerable music then i'm probably for i would say you would enjoy it mm-hmm. okay awesome well that's all the questions i have jake do you have anything else oh no man we freaking we attacked this guy left and right <laughs> shark I hope, attack i hope i I hope I was all right because I know how my mind works and I'm always thinking of 900 things at once. So oh, I try man. You, you, prob- you probably wrote a whole song right now <laughs> while we Seriously. were talking in your head. <laughs> oh, my God. He's like, I don't even pay attention to y'all. I'm going to work on some shit. I know, dude. I'm just like, wait. wait. <laughs> That's why the camera's so high, high on his face because he has a pen and paper right under him writing a song. He's not his notes, bro. I'm putting the- oh, yeah, this is good shit, man. <laughs> no, but Elijah, thank you, you guys, thank you man. again you know, for coming on the show. You know, if you haven't heard him, listen to him. You're you're great, great music. And thank you so you know, much, dude. We hope you do great things, man. Listen, man, I hope you guys have me back on again because this was really fun, dude. I appreciate you guys a lot. Yeah, definitely. We're gonna be doing some more stuff here pretty soon to kind of up the ante. So hope you're ready for it, dude. I'm freaking ready, bro. All right. All right I hope you guys. I hope you guys have a great night. And definitely, have, definitely have to keep in touch. If you need anything, hit me up for sure. Sounds good, man. Appreciate you it, brother, man. Take All right, easy. peace out. You too. Later. Later. That was great. He's fantastic. Uh, I loved having hey, him on the show. Hey, he's has a crazy mind. You know, that's crazy because you look at you know certain people and you look at their, I guess, their personality, and you would never think that this guy is like writing so fucking much. I mean, it makes sense, you know. And like you said, you know, just keep creating quality content. And, you know, he's a verified artist on Spotify. He's got 56,530 monthly listeners. And one of his songs, Antidote Alone, has 159,000 views or streams. But or it's crazy. So, I mean, you, I, are you a person that could sit there and write two songs at night? I tried doing that in California, but I drove myself fucking bonkers, man. I, I would go fucking crazy. I, I think could a really, I, kill you, too. I could barely write one song in the span of a month you know let alone two songs a night uh well i I think you're putting more intention into your music you want something to sound good and for other people they have it easier than like for people like us it's like we we're like uh yeah and you really if you haven't heard elijah kyle um he's his music makes you feel and it um makes you feel vulnerable and kind of tells you like it doesn't matter you know 
I mean, it matters. You matter. It matters. Your mentality. A lot matters, of people can relate to you, it. You can, you can, you can get through it. And he shows you how he's gotten through it. He's gotten through a lot of things and you know, his music makes you feel. And I appreciate that. Great guy. Listen to his music. Um, we are, we are going to release something next Monday. Um, since it's Christmas time, you know, on Friday or Christmas on Friday, we're going to try to fit in an interview. But if we don't, I mean, we'll let you know, of course, but um, we're really going to try. And we should invite him up to do a bowling thing and like document it, put it up. <laughs> you imagine? Kick all of our asses. Music Junkies Bowling League. Bowling tournament. Just get all kinds of uh, people we've got on this show. Dude, that'd be crazy. Just like a big old potluck. Right? So, anyways, we got masks on the website. Mine's um, on order, so I'll be able to show it off. Um, you could get a mask now. We took off the phone cases, but, you know, if you want one, let us know. We'll put them back up. So, we have masks, t-shirts, and a hoodie, and we're working on more designs for you um, soon. Please subscribe to our YouTube. Uh, follow us on all platforms, Facebook, Instagram. Um, like us on Spotify, Our Heart Radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. And as always, we love you and we hope you stay safe. See y'all.